All right, aloha everyone. My name is Jessica. I'm the education director here at the Maui Ocean Center. We are back in front of our open ocean exhibit with our special guest, Paul, and we're gonna be doing another creature feature. So Paul, why don't you go ahead and introduce our animal of the week, the ray. Yeah, so we have four stingrays in here. The species is Hawaiian broad stingray, or lupe in Hawaiian, which means kite. Similar body shape to a kite. So I see them hanging out on the bottom behind me right now and that's because they're what we call benthic feeders and that term just means bottom feeders. So that's where they hang out, where they forage. So their mouth is going to be located on the underside of their body and it's pretty unique, pretty special. Inside their mouth they have what we call tooth plates and those are used for crushing and grinding. So if you if you ever see a stingray getting some lunch, it's probably going to be little bits of stuff going everywhere. They're super messy eaters. All right. In our tunnel, as you move through there, a lot of the time you can actually see the rays go over top and get a unique view of that underside anatomy. So you'll notice, oh yeah, the mouth right there where the tooth plates are going to be located. <laughs> and if you guys were able to see, also, you see some gill slits on the underside as well. So that's actually going to be where the water exits after they breathe it. And if you notice the small holes, those are the nostrils or the nares of the stingray. All right, so that was a really nice view of the underside of a stingray. It's a view we don't normally get to see when we're out swimming around, because all of that is usually facing the sand, facing the bottom. So that was a, a lovely introduction to our stingray. So you mentioned that these are called Hawaiian broad stingrays. Um, and so you did mention that they are stingrays. How do you tell the difference between a stingray and a manta ray? Well, there's a few ways you can tell them apart. Um, one is going to be where they're hanging out. So the stingrays, as I mentioned, are benthic feeders, which means bottom. That's where they hang out, on the bottom. Whereas mantas are filter feeders, so they're going to be swimming through the water column. All right, how they swim is a little bit differently. If you see our stingrays swimming around, you're going to notice that they undulate. Whereas the mantas, they're doing more of a flapping motion as they're swimming about. Also, probably to me, the most obvious thing that I see different when I look at the stingrays versus the mantas. In the front of the face of the mantas, they have these two unique structures called cephalic fins or cephalic flaps. And they're used to guide water in as they're filter feeding. So if you look at the front of the face and you see those two structures, definitely you're gonna have a manta. Awesome, thank you so much for describing the differences. Um, and I think there is a really vital as well is that stingrays do have a stinger or a barb at the end of their tail. Now tell me, Paul, are you nervous swimming around in there with these stingrays? <laughs> I'm not too nervous at all. But our rays do actually have their barbs still attached. Do not remove them at all. It's going to be located about a third of the way down the tail on top. The barbs can get quite large, up to about six inches or so. And I mentioned we don't remove the barbs, and the reason is, well, A, I'm not worried about it to begin with, but we do release many of our animals back out to the wild, and we would want them to have that mechanism still in place. So that's what it used for, defense, not to attain food. So they're not hunt, but it's a very last line of self-defense, and that's because usually if they use it, it breaks off. All right, so a scenario they probably would use the barb. Maybe a shark is trying to turn them into lunch. That's when they'll whip up that barb, try to impale the shark. Great means of self-defense, but in the process, the barb will probably break off. So they are very reluctant to do that. 
Awesome. Thank you, Paul. So Paul must not be very intimidating inside of this exhibit. All of these stingrays don't feel that they need to use their primary form of defense. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Paul. We really appreciate you coming out and uh, explaining a little bit about our creature feature of the week, the stingray. Thank you guys so much and join us back next week for another creature feature. Mahalo.